as librarians, previously you were custodians. You just looked after, a, not just, you looked after a repository of valuable intellectual property, mostly books in the old days. But now already in the last 10, 15 years, your jobs have changed. You are now looking after resources of all different types. Some of them are digital, some of them are still books. Some of them are journals and so on. Um, but in the last few years, now your job is changing again. Now you guys are beginning to help lecturers create resources. So you're becoming not just custodians, you're becoming creators of knowledge. All right. So um, keeping that in mind, that now you're beginning to put together um, some original resources, and you're not just lo looking after um, other people's IP, now you actually have a role of creating knowledge. So if you're using OERs, how can you adapt what someone else has done and then let us, and then share it more generally with others? So that's what we're going to look at in this next LP is how do you adapt or change open educational resources or open content? All right. Uh, just checking, is everyone online here for that? If you are signed up for publishing open access, then you can come back at 1300 hours. You can have a 45 minute break and you can come back uh, then. Tony's going to introduce that learning pathway. I'm going to introduce the second one, uh, which is adapting open. Content. Just to confirm that is in 45 minutes time because people are on different time zones. So uh, publish open access will start in 45 minutes. Thanks. Okay. Cool. So I don't feel obliged to be here for the whole session if you're, you are doing finding and publishing, um, then you can have a little break now. Okay, please be back in 45 minutes. All right, let's have a look at the next one. I'm going to share my screen again. Sorry, give me a second while I get myself organized. Um, mm No, yeah, yes, there's the green line. I'm just checking. All right. Um, welcome, everyone. Sure, lots of talking. Um, adapting open content is the second learning pathway that we would like you to analyze and also learn from. So, as mentioned previously, this is about how you can change the OERs to better suit your environment. Okay, again, we would like you to wear your evaluator's hat. We want to know to what extent it works. We want to know if we found it accessible, easy to use, whether you found it uh, interesting, uh, engaging, and so on. So uh, again, as Ephraim has pointed out earlier, we would like you to fill in the baseline first, please. So um, to, to do that, can you come into the Moodle? I sent out the Moodle password on Friday. Please, can you find uh, your password? Make sure you got in. We did a count just now, and just over half of you have already got into the Moodle. Uh, can you then click on Adapting Open Content Baseline? Okay, fill in the form. It's a Google form. Can you tell us what you know already? And if you don't know any of it, just click I don't know. All right. Hopefully, at the end of the learning pathway, you will be an expert. All right, so I'm going to, uh, the next thing in the list of the Moodle course for adapting open content is the learning pathway link. You can click on there, it'll take you to the link. Remember, um, we said that we would like you to do the assignment. We want to know if you assimilate the skill, can you do the doing after the, after the learning pathway? And we want you to upload your assignment here. So you'll click on there and you'll see there's a, um, Oh, well, I haven't got it because I am, I'm the boss. 
All right, but you will have a button down here which says submit the assignment. Okay. Um, and uh, we would like you to do it there. After you've done it, we'd also like you to fill in the user experience survey. We want to know um, how, how you experience it. That's how we're going to collect some of your data. And then if you want the certificate for completing the course, you have to um, make sure that you've uh, accessed all the documents from within the Moodle. The Moodle is going to issue the certificate, not me. And it's waiting to see what you've done. That's why you have to log in so we know who you are. All right. Uh, you can see at the moment it's waiting for two activities to be completed before it will issue your certificate. Your, your certificate will be digital. It will be emailed to you and you can also access it from this link. You can see at the moment it's gray, but when you've completed all the tasks, this will become active and you can get your certificate. The certificate is endorsed by AFLIA and we will be very appreciative uh, of your insights and your input. Okay, are people uh, clear on the role of the Moodle platform? The <coughs> Normally for CPD, if you were to use these, we wouldn't think you need to come through the Moodle. It's just because you're part of a pilot and we want to, we want to have all your data. We want to understand what you did and how you experienced it and so on. So that's the only reason we're using Moodle for the pilot. When you're running these CPD courses at your own institution, you can just go straight to the learning pathway. And um, that's where we're going to go now. So you click on this link here, learning pathway, adapt, open content. Click. All right. I'm going to just uh, stop sharing for a moment and then reshare the, because I need the second screen to come up. Give me a second. All right, can you see it on the screen? There should be um, a little lady and a guy. I'm assuming I'm going to get my chat up so I can keep an eye on what you're saying. All right, here we go. So this works best if you've done finding open content. Um, because it assumes you've already found something that you would like to change. All right. So this learning pathway provides a quick and simple solution to adapting open content for new purposes. As we mentioned in the previous introduction, that's kind of the value proposition of the um, OERs. All right. So what we're going to do in this little learning pathway? Well, we're going to cover these type of things. So number one, is why would you want to adapt it in the first place? I mean, what, why? What's the value proposition of changing someone else's resource? So we'll unpack that and have a look. And then we start talking about what, how do you adapt OERs? What, what's possible? So a popular way of talking about that is the five R's. So we will look at um, the five, there they are. Retain, reuse, revise, Remix, redistribute. Okay, so those are the five R's. It's quite a popular way of understanding what you can do with these open resources. Of two of them, though, are of particular interest to us. It's number three and four, revise and remix. And the reason why is because these R's, or these uses, um, allow some type of adaptation. You're allowed to change the resource. Okay, so we will, uh, in the course of this little learning pathway, unpack those two in some detail. Um, are you familiar with the five R's? In the chat, if you want, you can tell me to what extent you have heard about the five R's before. So those of you who have never heard of OERs, I doubt you have, but for those people who said they were familiar, so I can remember Richard said he was familiar. Um, can't remember the others, sorry. Um, um, do you know what the, the five R's are? So in the chat, please let me know if you're familiar with the five R's. Okay. So the first thing we're going to look at then is how do you revise? So we're going to look at some editing tools. We're going to make sure that you can find the right resource. We're going to show you how to download specific um, online materials. We'll show you how to save and edit. 
and even there are some tools where you can edit online. So we'll look at those. And then the next column is remix. So we are going to look at um, what's the difference between an OER collection, which is really a collection of OERs, or an OER remix, which is really the mashing together of multiple OERs. So they're similar, but they're not the same. So we'll look at that, and then we'll show you how to mash our OERs together into a new, a new resource. And we'll just talk about the practical considerations. Then the assignment is to do it. We want to see if you can revise and remix. So uh, we're going to get you to do it, and then you're, then you're out. All right, here's our outcomes. Why adapt? What's a good resource to adapt? How do you revise a resource? And how do you remix a resource? So we're gonna look at those. Okay, so here's that part about, so now I'm going to take you through a little part of the learning pathway, and then I'm going to leave you alone to complete it yourself. And we'll reconvene at, at a later stage. We'll mention when soon, uh, but not too far away. And we would like you to have completed the learning pathway and also your assignment by then. So uh, keep that in mind. It's rare that you find an OER that is perfect. Okay, quite often you go, mm, I wouldn't mind just tweaking it a bit or shortening it or putting a picture in or... Uh, putting in some captions or putting in a local case study or translating it or so on and so on. So there's always something that could be a little bit better. And it's not like a textbook where you have to adapt your teaching to uh, suit the textbook. Nah, now the textbook is malleable. You can change the textbook, uh, especially open textbooks. All right. So the idea then is just uh, what would you like to change? And there's a little introduction. Here's our little guy. Let's just play the video. He kind of tries to give you a scenario about why you might want to do this. Okay, let's just have a look at that list again. All right, so what are some of the value propositions of adapting? So um, if you think about it, uh, if a, a lecturer came to you and said, oh, I need a psychology one um, course, or I need a biology introduction to biology course, all right, you, um, that, person, that lecturer could sit down and then just create it from the curriculum. So the curriculum will normally tell you what are the topics and how many hours and all that type of thing. And then they would have to sit down, do some research and um, over quite some time, start building the thing. All right. But now with open courseware, we can save time now. We can actually take a generic course that already exists that someone else has authored and then fix it to suit the curriculum, fix it to suit the students, fix it so that it suits the institution. And uh, as we mentioned in the previous one, previous learning pathway, um, the license allows this to happen. All right, so you can save time is number one. Number two, you can benefit from the experience of teachers who have taught the subject before. So this is a big benefit for new teachers. Often um, some of our senior students become, uh, uh, are given a lectureship, uh, become a junior lecturer, but they've never taught in their lives before. They've never created a course before. They've always been the recipient of the course. So now we can ask them for the section that they are going to teach to actually take an existing course or resource and actually uh, start changing it to better suit 
the local environment. So you can benefit from the experience of others who have taught the subject before because you're, and then you can improve it. It's also cheaper than buying many expensive texts. So uh, in the open education, uh, finding open content, there's a section on textbooks. So you can even find free quality textbooks for, for the, um, especially for undergraduate courses. Okay, so, um, um, and the nice thing is, unlike published texts, which you're not allowed to touch, you're not allowed to copy the pictures, you're not allowed to uh, reorganize the textbook, nothing like that. No, with the open textbooks, you can actually um, adapt them so that they better suit the curriculum as your institution calls it. So they are, and therefore they are cheaper because you don't have to re, you don't have to create a completely new textbook. You can just fix an existing one. And then the nice thing, of course, is it's legal. Okay, there's none of this copyright or being sued. Um, I don't want to mention any names, but one of the African universities I was working in uh, was facing a big law, co uh, law case because um, one of the publishers wasn't happy uh, with what they had done by making copies of various texts and so on. So it's legal. So you don't have to worry about being sued or anything like that. So those are some reasons why open content does make sense. All right, so in the chat, I would like you to say then, as a librarian, what are some of the common problems you have uh, helping your lecturers find appropriate content? Can you think in your context, what are common problems in terms of finding resources or using exhaust resources? All right, so in the chat, I would like you to answer the question on the screen. In what ways do most education resources need to be different to better suit your learners? And you can go to town. You can tell me about the inappropriate pictures or the costs of the texts or the journals. Um, you can say that they're in the wrong language. You can, what are the issues that you have with a lot of your resources for your learning context? What are the types of things that could be better? All right, so Thank in you. the chat, I'd like you to try and answer the question on the screen. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. So people just think about it now. Sometimes, you know, you, you, you can find catalogs of uh, books, you know, books listed but maybe they are too expensive or maybe you don't have sufficient funds or maybe the books come and um, the examples there do not you know have the african context you would have wanted you know or sometimes the language even if it's english is like hard to break down you're not really sure of what they are talking about so these are just challenges and then you know that um, so many institutions keep on introducing new courses and you don't even have books for them on your shelves so challenges like that are, are what um, Andrew is asking you about so just list them in the chat so that we'll have an idea that these ones are, are what you face you know, these are the things that you find difficult in, in, in getting materials for your faculty members, for students and for, and for the teachers. So just write in the chat box. Thank you. All right, we'd like everyone to make at least one post. So um, again, we want you to write a sentence or two. Can you identify 
how many of the resources that you are on offer in the library could be better. What could be different so that they better suit your context? Maybe, maybe they didn't understand the question, Andrew. Right. As, as no, okay, I've seen, all right, good. Rahila has written. Mm -hmm. Rahila said um, the ability to identify the right resources. Thank you, Rahila. Rahila, who is that with you that's sharing your device? Yes, we can see someone in the car. <laughs> yeah, there are two of you. <laughs> it's okay at least uh, she has said something excellent all right um what we're trying to get uh here is for you guys to tell us which of when you're looking for resources what are the problems that you have for example and I don't want to, I don't want to answer. I'm in Joburg. What do I know of what's happening in Nigeria? I don't, what am I know what's happening in Ghana? So you must tell me what your librarians, this is your thing. Okay. So which teaching resources or teaching and learning resources, how could they be better than what you've got on the stacks at the moment? Are that what you've got? Is it out of date? Is it in the wrong language? Is it the, or is the language pitched incorrectly or are all the case studies Western or um, to what extent is, are these resources expensive or, I mean, come guys, this is your thing. What are, how could you improve the resources that you shared with the students and that you share with the lecturers? Okay. So, um, Ralia said that, just identifying the right resources is always a struggle, saying that they're never quite right, okay? But I would like to know, how could they be better? Come, come guys, are you sleeping? Are you all sleeping? Have you fallen asleep? My voice is that boring. All right, there's the question on the screen. How might most education resources be better? Mm. All right. Do you find that in your language? Maybe you want it in your local language. Maybe there's not enough. I'm trying to remember. Sometimes, West Africa. Hello, Andrew. Yeah. Hello, Andrew. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes what I've um, experienced myself when I was still working in a library, you know, you order for books. You know, you, you see titles and you order. By the time that you get them and the lecturers come, you find out that it is not really, it's close, but it's not really what they want, you know? And then the, the way that concepts keep on cropping up, new things happening, you know, the rate of um, information um, coming up, new things, mm. you find out that once you get a book, uh, by the time you, you, you buy it, process it, put it on the shelves and people know, other things have come up already. Right. It, it, like, it becomes outdated quickly. So that's a major problem for 
for many African libraries. And you can't throw away the book, so you keep it there. And the people will come and say, okay, this is what you have, but this is what we had. You know, current best practices are hard to capture and, um, and, um, and put in books, and then they will appear on the shelves immediately in libraries. I don't know if that makes sense. Hmm. No, it does. And yeah. um, I think that's, that's common throughout the whole world, all right? The idea that um, the time it takes for a textbook to be authored, um, published, printed, distributed, um, processed for the library, and then made ready in the library, a lot of what it was talking about is already dated. It takes so long to, for that process to happen. So that could be one way that we could use OERs, is that we just adapt something that already exists so that we can make it up to date. We can make it mm. ready uh, and appropriate for um, a particular context. So I like that. I see yeah. you've got... Um, another, thing, yes? another thing, Andrew, is that, you know, you see, it's not that Africans, we don't write. Africans write. But because we are, it's as if we don't really have um, a deep culture of data you know that you know for ca that that captures the uh, maybe case studies you find out that maybe case studies like in um, in an area like management you find out that case studies are mostly from outside of the continent because we don't have enough stories ourselves it's not that those things are not happening in africa but we are not used to capturing data or, or capturing our stories with data that will tell that, that that can be used perfectly as this is how it happened. These are the uh, uh, research findings. These are the uh, research data. You know, we, we don't have them much in Nigeria. So they use um, case studies outside of the continent and you find out that it's not really the same because the no. values are all different. The environment is all different. So that is, you know, a problem with many of the um, texts that we get that we acquire in uh, for African libraries um, and I think that's the beauty of OERs again is that um, the if as African stories become available then we can swap them into these adaptable resources so the nice thing is you don't have to write the whole textbook you could just say all right uh, we've now found some local case studies. We will now incorporate them into the text. So that's another example of why you would want to adapt an open educational resource. You don't have to write the whole textbook. You just populate it with local ideas or local stories. And uh, um, I see we've got, uh, it says the times are changing, but most students in our part of the world still are not too good in using online resources. So much is still required. Okay, that's, that's changing and it's changing fast. All right, if anything, it's our lecturers who are holding things back. You'll find that the students pick that up relatively quickly. Um, they're of a generation who are not too phased by technology and now curious and interested. So it's not a, it's a generalization. And there are some students who do, who, who do not. But I think our biggest problem in terms of changing uh, and starting to use online resources is our lecturers. And maybe you guys, because you don't write in the chat. Um, so the, uh, the thinking then is we need to get our generation on board and fast. Otherwise, we'll become less uh, relevant. Uh, I've put currency there because I was thinking of what Inkem was saying about keeping things up to date. Uh, changing needs of users says Aloy, Aloysius, um, yes, if we're going to say relevant and make sure that the resources we are offering them are relevant, then we need to be able to uh, be up to date in terms of the latest trends, both technology, but also the way people learn, all right? We're finding that students now want their courses on their phone. Um, we are finding students don't necessarily want to come to campus because they are working or they're in lockdown or they're protesting or whatever. So we're finding the changing needs of users is always changing and therefore we need to make our resources adaptable so that they can those users. 
Uh, Ngozi says, the authors are afraid of submitting their resources for OER. At times, internet connectivity and low, low bandwidth is another problem, okay? Um, and that is what we have, to, uh, I agree with Ngozi, and that's what we've discovered, is that African academics are extremely conservative, okay? They often um, believe that their work is inferior to what is happening around the world, and that is a load of rubbish. That is absolute rubbish. Our problem is that we don't publish enough, and we don't get things out there enough, and we don't show the world or tell the world that African is good. Well, it can be good. So the idea then is we've got to get past that mindset, all right, that our resources are not as good because it's rubbish, all right? Uh, at times, internet connectivity and low bandwidth is another problem. I'm afraid that is true, but it is changing and it's changing fast. So uh, as more and more cell phone companies put up these masts, we're finding that um, in most African countries, the costs are coming down and the, the bandwidth uh, uh, access is getting better and better. Um, in, in some ways, in uh, Mozambique, for example, it is now easier to put things online because people and just dis distributing paper books is so costly and expensive and the roads are so bad that uh, the costs are astronomical. So it's actually cheaper to put things online because their connectivity is quite pervasive and not everywhere, but it's getting better and better and better because people don't mind paying for cell phones. So things are changing and they're changing fast. So don't use that as a reason not to go forward. Um, if anything, within five years, it'll be a completely different picture to where we are now. All right, are there any other comments? Okay, that was pretty poor, people. How many? One, two, three, four of you, five. Tried to answer the question. Are you sleeping? Hmm? All right, sorry, I'm, you can see I've been talking for two hours. I'm getting tired. I'd rather you do the talking. All right. So when we look for OERs and we find the, uh, the licenses, and if you're in the last session, you, you'll recognize these, okay? Um, which ones are you allowed to adapt? So again, we're going to go, um, let me give them, can I give them numbers? Let's go. Column one is, so we go down. So one, two, three is down. And then four is the one at the top of the second column. Right. So in the chat, everyone this time, don't go to sleep. Everyone, which of these six licenses can you, can you adapt? Any ideas? Do you remember, if, um, if you haven't done the first tutorial, or listen to me go through it, then you might struggle a bit. But can you give me which ones allow you to adapt or revise the resources? Um. Okay, okay, so the numbers are the first column, it's one, two, three, and then four, five, and six are in the second column. Have they got a pen in Zoom? No. Yes. Do they? Where's the pen? Yes. Where's the go pen? To the Let top me of help. The, go to the Let top me help the a little Andrew. <laughs> you know. Okay. So one of them you you can't you, you can't see from it. That's not um, the last. Uh oh. Annotate. Where's that? Is yeah, it? it's not been on your system. It's been disabled. Ah, right. unfortunately. All right, so yeah. you're going to have to listen to me, people. I would like you then to now look at the six licenses. We're counting them. First column, one, two, three. So you can move your cursor. Yeah. We can see your cursor. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. So this, yeah. Is, this is number one. This is number two. Mm -hmm. This is number three. This is number four. Mm -hmm. This is number five. And this is number six. All right, so which of these six licenses, based on what we mentioned in the last hour, allow you to change the resource? You're allowed to adapt, to repurpose, to make a derivative. 
Andrew, I wanted to help us a little bit. Yeah. And I said from number six, the way you counted, anywhere you see N and D, you know that you can share. You know that you can't adapt. Uh -huh. So number six is out. Good. Number five, number five is out. Also the ND. Yeah, because of the ND. Yeah. Number four, non-commercial purposes. Mm -hmm. Can you change share that? Line. Yeah. Uh? Yes, you are. You can yeah, share. share. Yeah. Share alike. Share alike. It just means that the new derivative must have the same license, but you can change it. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. Number three. Number three again, non-commercial. Cool. Can you change number, it? Number three, can you change it? Mm, you can change it. You can, but it, 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 it must be for private purposes? Uh, not necessarily. It, 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 the fact that it says non-commercial just means you can't make a profit from it, but you are allowed to make a new version of it. All right, so it doesn't restrict you from changing it, right. or translating it, or putting new pictures in, or adding African mm. case studies, or whatever. That doesn't matter. You can do that, but you just can't make a profit from your new, your new derivative. Okay, your new oh, right. So you can. So the answer is yes. Number two, mm -hmm. can you change it? Yeah, you can. Yes, you can. Sure. Yes. And yeah, the first can. one? Yeah. Definitely. D nice yeah. enough. The first one's the best one for us developers. We love number one because it means yeah. we can get on with it. We can do what we like. Okay, obviously we have to attribute the user, but uh. we can change it. We can adapt it. We can translate it. We can put pictures mm -hmm. in it. All right, so well done, and Kim. You've got it correct 100 percent. cool the two you can't are these number five and six all right yeah. because as in kim pointed out it says no derivatives no ch no new versions mm. all right? so those two you can't but if you find a resource with these four on then um go for it you're allowed to make changes so all those things that we were talking about, uh, how to improve resources, can be, can be done. All uh, right. Can I ask a question here, Andrew? Please, can you go up a little? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I, I shared yesterday about um, the course that we are going to run with um, Wikipedia that we got a, a grant from. The curriculum that we are going to adapt from OCLC, the, the, the license it has is this number two, CC by SA 4.0. So why that 4.0? Oh, all right. Um, uh, in the video, I don't know if you saw, if you were here within the first hour, we showed a video and the, the person said that the copyright law in the US, all right, and then they went on to discuss pros and cons, but every country has some type of a copyright law, all right? Mm -hmm. And the idea mm -hmm. then is, if we talk of the Copyright Act, then there are certain restrictions. They're all pretty similar, but they are worded slightly different and obviously they have to slot into the existing policy environment of that country. Yeah. So um, what Creative Commons has done is that they have made national chapters of their organization, which means okay. uh, they have an office basically. Uh, which keeps tabs of what is the issues in that particular country. So a lot of these licenses keep being adapted as the Copyright Act is adjusted or amended or changed. And then right. Creative Commons uh, responds by putting out a version. So like you saw a version 4.0, it just yeah. means the fourth version of the Creative Commons uh, response to that local right. legislation. Okay, so it's ready for the lawyers. Should they yeah. ever want to take someone to court over the Creative Commons license, then there's a specific version that they will argue over of of the of the license. Okay, so, right. so each country tends to have a different version of that license. For us users, the 4.0 means absolutely nothing because we oh, more right. or less work at this level that you're seeing now. Um, mm. Are we allowed to make changes? 
Are we allowed to share it? Blah, de, blah, de, blah. So we tend to work at this level, whereas the lawyers need to get down into the legalese, into the, word, the specific wording of the okay. act and the licenses. So yeah, um, that's, they've told you they want to work within that specific license. And mm -hmm. it tends to be one for each country, and there are a couple of international ones as well. Does that answer? All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. I'm good. All right. Um, Andrew, I'm just alerting you to time. Five, four. two, one. Yay! I don't know why I got tired. Today. <laughs> uh, um, um, I'll be glad to hand over to you guys, and you can do. We'll, we will take a little break. That's why I'm just saying, if you could end a tiny bit early, just to, so people can have a comfort break. Okay. Cool. Um. Here's, I'll just use this last activity. Um, when you see these in the learning pathway, remember that you can just, this one is for drag and drop. So it's very similar to what I asked and Kim to do. And uh, so to which of these licenses permits repurposing and which ones don't. All right, so uh, can, you, can you change a resource that has this license? And then you can drag it. And you can say, no, that's a restrictive one. And if you get it wrong, it flashes back into the pile. And if you get it right, you get a little tick. Okay, so if you see this in the learning pathway, that's how you use them. All right, I'm gonna stop there. And I'm gonna encourage you guys who have signed up for adapting open content to, um, to work through in full in your own time at your own pace where we're going to try, encourage you to do it within two weeks but we'll give you the actual data at the end of the uh, session um and let me just take you back into the moodle just to remind you where everything is where is my moodle 